Hello and welcome to another video. This one is just a short video and it's going to be about repairing a motor that I already had with the motor that I got in the recent haul that I did, that was the last video, about the 7755 and the motor haul. And yes, I know I'm going to do a, re a review on the 7755, I just want to do this video quick so I can get this motor together because it's part of the preparations for some big layouts, some big upcoming layouts. So I did already do a video about repairing a red motor and I go a lot more into a lot into detail on motor repair and the different parts of the motor and how they work in that video. So if you want to learn more about that, you should check that video that video out. This is just for a different motor and it's just going to be a quick video explaining what was wrong with the motor and how I'm going to fix it. Uh, so first you can see here are all the parts for the motor. This is a type one black motor. At least I'm using the shell of a type one black motor. You can see it says 370 on the bottom and the contact holes, there's no middle pin here or in the front, so you know it's a type one. And then the, uh, the pin here is solid instead of separated. So the axles and all the parts in fact have been already cleaned and they're ready to be reassembled. I just want to shoot this video before I reassembled it so I could explain. And so the main problem that was wrong with this motor when I got it a while back was that the commutator was fried. And what I did recently was with the new motor that I got in the hall, which was a type two black motor and it has been opened. I, I simply stole the commutator and the main axle from that and used it on this motor. And you may be asking, why didn't I just repair the motor that I got? Well, because I already have two type two working black motors, but I do not have a working type one black motor and I'm trying to get all of the motors so that eventually I can do a motor comparison video. I still have a type two red and a type three red to get, which will be expensive. But other than that, I've got, I'm gonna have all the motors after I repair this one. So this was the motor that I got yesterday when I got the package. And you can see on the inside, there's no, uh, commutator like the central motor housing so this is this in the right hand is the one that I'm going to be using for the type 1 black motor and the motor block here is in this motor is not filled it doesn't ha it doesn't have the central shafts but the, this motor is still together otherwise and then so I just stole the commutator and put it in the motor housing for this if you want to see what a fried commutator looks like so here is the central motor block this is just not in its housing of the, this is the original commutator of this motor. And so if I put them here, the good one is on the right, the bad one is on the left. You can see pretty clearly that the one on the right, this copper, this piece with the copper and the ceramic disc, that's called the wiring disc, this part is good. All, this, all the copper parts are glued or attached to the central shaft and the wiring disc is soldered in place. All the soldering is fine. Now on the broken one, you can see pretty clearly that the plastic is all melted. Those copper plates are, one's even loose here. And the plastic like on the base here is all warped. And then the wiring disc has become unsoldered, which is a common problem if you run your motors under too, mu under, under too much load. So obviously this commutator is bad. It can't be repaired and I cannot use it in another motor, which is unfortunate. I've opened two motors now with broken commutators and there's, there's just no fix for that. As, at least as of from what I've discovered, I have not found a replacement, a suitable rep replacement motor that will ship to the US. And one other thing that I'd like to mention quickly is that this type two motor that I got and stole the commutator from, you see these metal blocks, they're labeled A and B. These, the recent discovery that I found was that these are actually different than in a type one motor. So if you know about motor variations, you know that types two through four have this middle pin and type one is the only one without a middle pin. And I was looking at it, I was like, you can't have the, the metal blocks have to be a little bit different because the, motor, the metal blocks in type one motors, they cannot accept a middle pin. So if I open this type two motor, you can see that actually they are a little bit different. And that was what I found interesting on this, the part that I'm holding in my right hand, this loose metal part, you can see next to the contact hole on like to, just to the left of the contact hole. So right here, this is the type one, the type one block and this, the metal part extends a little bit inwards. And you can see in the later version, the metal part is pretty small outside of this hole. And the reason that they did, the, they did that was that these, 
these cases can accept the middle pins. If you put the type one internals, the type one metal blocks inside this motor here, you can't put the connect, you can't put a connector with a middle pin in here. So I found that kind of interesting because it means they change the internals of the motor, not just the externals from 1980 to 1981 when they started producing type two motors. So you can't use these, the type one internals in any motor that's type two through four, but I think you can, it works the other way around. So these are all the parts that I'll be using and I'm going to re-lubricate and re-glue everything just like I did in the first motor video. I'm not going to show it after that, but this has been verified working. I've connected to the transformer and put it on the track. Everything's working. So I'm now going to re-lubricate and re-glue it, and I'm not going to show that on the camera. Um, but I think that's the end of the video for today. I just wanted to show a little bit about this project that I was doing. And I'm going to be working on it, a couple videos about the 7755 and then some large layouts. So thank you for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for more content, and I will see you in the next video.